back this up now is something the majority of people in this country believe should be a right for women. Because right now, it's not a right for women. A woman doesn't have a right to choose to have an abortion. We need to be very clear about that in this country because that's where this debate is coming from. It's also where I agree with the member for Gainesville when he says that this should be a parliamentary matter. That is exactly what this petition is calling us to do and indeed what those conversations about whether or not the bill should include that. And I, I'll wager it will make a difference in many ways that he hasn't yet realised because we don't have a right to an abortion. Even those women seeking abortions do not have a right to an abortion. They have to secure the support of two doctors, and those doctors have to act in good faith to agree that a woman should have an abortion because the alternative would require her to have mental distress or physical distress or a threat to life. That is not a right. I will happily, of course, give way. I'm very glad that the Honourable Gentleman raised that question because he can look no, look, doesn't need to look far to see an exact example of actually what does happen when you have a human right to an abortion. Because let's be clear, it's women in England, Scotland and Wales in this, this nation state who do not have access to a right to abortion. Women in Northern Ireland do. So we have already now got legislation on our statute book that directly gives women in Northern Ireland a human right to an abortion, Without which means bit, that there is... Without an act. Well, there was a, there wasn't. The gentleman is, is, is shouting, but I, I guess he missed out on the very debates we had in 2019 about this issue where this place did indeed pass legislation. And that's a very interesting mechanism for this bill and why this bill could be the right vehicle for this and why a human rights perspective is important. Because those of us who believe the time has come to say abortion is health care and to remove the criminal element recognise that removing the criminal element requires you to replace it with an alternative foundation for those rights. And it is... Well. The Honourable Gentleman suggests that difficult cases are the unique preserve of abortion provision. No, there are difficult cases when it comes to freedom of speech and people's motivation. What I do recognise is that right now there are women on trial for having a miscarriage or potentially being accused of seeking an abortion perhaps when they were further along in their pregnancy than they realised. And it is not right to see these as criminal matters when we're talking about a healthcare provision. So in which case, what we need to do is set out and making that choice. Countless nations around the world already do it. Indeed, in the current criminal basis for our abortion access, we are behind other countries like Russia, Australia, South Africa, Vietnam, Germany, and Argentina. Other countries like Canada have explicitly classified abortion as a human right. Lawmakers in France have just agreed to write it into their constitution. Belgium, Denmark, Sweden are also considering constitutional re amendments. I'll, I'll just finish my sentence, if I may. I'm desperate to hear what the member from Gonesborough has to say, but I want to be very clear that this is a debate that is happening around the world. Now, Roe versus Wade was the spark that reaffirmed that that fire needed to burn. Because many of us have known that even though we have access to abortion in this country, that access is not secure. It can be challenged. Indeed, I have spent 12 years in this place listening to people chipping away at that access and using the fact that it is not a legal right to do so. The member from Gainsborough and I have been on different sides of this debate. I would love to hear from him why he believes he has a right to choose for a woman what happens to her body. I'd quite, like to ask, I'd quite like to ask my own question, if the Honourable Lady will <laughs> forgive me. If the right to abortion is so restrictive in this country, why do we have one of the highest abortion rates in the world? I did not say. Lady, for giving way. Does she really compare the procedures of a vasectomy with an abortion? Does she see them as of equal and like standing when one involves, as has been described by others, a second life, and she herself has said that she recognises that there is a point at which, during a pregnancy, where those rights are conferred on the unborn. I would say to the member opposite, turn the question round. Why does she believe that it's acceptable for men to be able to choose to have a vasectomy, but a woman cannot choose what happens to her own body? Why do we deny women choice over their bodies, but we don't deny men? And Forgive me, but I did do biology at school, so I know that there are often two people involved in the creation of a baby, so surely we should hold men equally accountable, yet somehow we don't deny men the rights to their bodies and bodily autonomy. I want to come to a finish, Sir Graham, because I know there are other people who have different views to me who wish to make her choice to have an abortion, because that would be the corollary of what he's saying. But does he recognise that when it comes to legalisation in Northern Ireland, we didn't just have decriminalisation, we didn't just take away the Offences Against the Persons Act, 
we also brought in laws to regulate how a woman could access an abortion. There is no late-term abortion. There is no sex selection in Northern Ireland. The abortion Northern Ireland regulations 2020 that our colleague opposite wants to cover precisely those issues. So it's not that enshrining a human rights perspective leads to no regulation. It removes the criminal element of our old regulation and allows us to have these very debates uh, uh, about abortion rights and the balance of rights around abortion anyway. Why is abortion any different to freedom of speech? He will recognise that people have very strong views about the application of freedom of speech, so much so that this government has decided to bring forward its own bill on freedom of speech, for example, in higher education. Why is it when it comes to women's rights, these matters are complicated and can only be dealt with by judges, but when it comes to freedom of speech, for example, we accept that there should be a parliamentary process and a piece of legislation whereby these matters can be resolved. Yes,